Mulholland as PLP secretary was the main liaison between MPs and the Labour Party. In February 2017, she said, Diane Abbott literally makes me sick. In the same WhatsApp group, senior staff discussed, discussed Abbott crying in the toilets and telling Michael Crick, a Channel 4 reporter at the time, where she was. Um, and now let's go to their WhatsApp chat, which is actually sickening. Uh, okay, so Patrick Hannigan. Abbott found crying in the loose. Julie Lawrence, a sort of crying emoji. Tracy Allen. Abbott Memorial Cupboard works well. Um, Patrick Hannigan, Diane in Leon on Vic Street, Fiona Stanton, shall we tell Michael Crick, Patrick Hannigan, already have. Uh, so this is someone, he's an executive director of the Labour Party who is telling people the location of Diane Abbott um, when she's been crying in the toilet. Um, before I bring you in, Aaron, I want to show um, what was potentially the context of Diane Abbott um, crying in a toilet. Now, I mean, it's it's common knowledge that she received more abuse, racist, sexist, Awful, awful abuse um, over the last four years than any other politician in, in Britain. Disgusting stuff. Um, but it is worth checking the dates of when this conversation happened and what was in the news um, on that day or the, or the following day, what was going on that week. Um, so this conversation was going on on the, 18th, on the 8th of March 2017. I'm going to get up a Guardian article from the 9th, sorry, the 8th of February 2017. I'm going to get up a Guardian article from the 9th of February 2017. Headline. Conservative officials suspended over racist tweet aimed at Diane Abbott. Um, the context of that tweet, you've got a local con conservative official was suspended from the party for retweeting a message aimed at Diane Abbott that had been, they say, described as racist, but it was, I think that's a bit bad from The Guardian, really. Uh, so he had tweeted, uh, done a tweet portraying Abbott, the shadow home secretary, as an ape wearing lipstick. And he posted, nice lips, kid, but a shade too much rouge. Disgusting. Um, but anyway, this is a quote that I thought was incredibly relevant to what's going on here. Um, so the controversy emerged as it was revealed that a female staff member in Abbott's team wrote to the Metropolitan Police about another threatening and racist message sent this week. Abbott would not comment on the police complaint, which was leaked to The Guardian, but sources confirmed that it had been sent. The worker claimed that death and rape threats and offensive messages focusing on race and weight were now a daily occurrence for the Shadow Home Secretary. So that week, Diane Abbott, her team had had to write to the Metropolitan Police about another um, message which was threatening violence, threatening rape. And obviously, Diane Abbott is quite rightly upset about this. And what do you do as director for campaigns of the Labour Party? You tell a Channel 4 journalist where she's getting her lunch. Leon is, is a cafe, it's a restaurant. So he, he's telling journalists to go and follow Diane Abbott, who's getting more abuse than any other politician in this country, to follow her when she goes for lunch and making jokes when she's mm. upset in a toilet. It's disgusting. It's horrific. It's harassment. It's targeted. It's a targeted campaign of harassment, not by, partly by Twitter trolls and the far right and so on, partly by the media. You always want a story. Oh, we, we maybe we can break the Shadow Home Secretary as a human being. Of course, far more interesting for them because she's a black woman who has left-wing views. Uh, but then it's aided and abetted by people within her own organisation, people who are meant to have her back people who are paid to have her back. And I, you know, it's just, it's remarkable. How dare anybody in the Labour Party say they're the party of anti-misogyny, anti-racism? How dare they? Uh, not even not even a Tory would sink this low. People said, oh, will I saw Owen Jones make a tweet, this is what the Tories do. No, they don't. The, the Bullingdon Club wouldn't, wouldn't do this to their own. Mm. It's absolutely despicable. Not one ounce of loyalty or integrity from these people. Disgusting, malevolent stuff. And you know, it's it, people like hyperbole. People love superlatives. How else would you like to characterize this? Somebody, and this, by the way, this gentleman has an OBE. He has an OBE and he's a director of the Labour Party. And he's telling, not just any old journalist, somebody who we know is a very hostile political journalist, at the I think time was political editor of Channel 4, Michael Crick, to find out where the Shadow Home Secretary is. This person isn't just not welcome in the Labour Party, shouldn't just not work for them. They're an abhorrent human being. They really need to look in the mirror. And I mean, when I tweeted this yesterday, Abby Wilkinson, a journalist and friend of the show, she tweeted under it like, I wouldn't do this to my worst enemy. Yeah. You know, it's sort of like, it, political enmity cannot explain this behavior. This behavior is like sociopathic. It's just, and anyway, let's actually, let's go to now Dawn Butler, because it obviously wasn't just Diane Abbott. Um, 
let's go to graphic six. So this is from October 2016. Um, Emily Oldno again. Dawn Butler. So this is when she's just been um, appointed to the shadow cabinet. Um, so then Neil Fleming, acting head of press and broadcasting. Yep. PLP women will go spare. Emily Oldno. Good grief. Um, Claire Francis Fuller. Did she not accuse the LP and its staff of being racist this week? Nice. Emily Oldno. Harriet White Privilege Harmon. Um, now, I mean, that that conversation would look dismissive and ridiculous enough as it is. Um, but given that <laughs> the people in that conversation, in the conversation uh, um, that we, we also now can see, um, were pointing out where the person subject to the most racism of any politician in the country was having lunch so that a journalist could follow them, um, to then think that, you know, Labour Party staff, it would be ridiculous to question whether or not they're anti-racists um, is, you know, more than a little ironic, isn't it, Aaron? But yeah, and also, look, I mean, sometimes you, you have to take stock and you go, well, you look around the room, you go, oh, wow, we're mostly middle-aged white people, white, white guys, actually. One of, the, one, of the, one of the astonishing things in this, in this report was Emily Oldenow, who is a woman, is repeatedly abusive about other women. Uh, you know, misogyny, misogynoir isn't just limited to men. You know, it can be internalized by women. And this is a classic example of that. Uh, but more horrific is seeing men, John Stolliday, Hennigan, it's two or three men repeatedly denigrate women. Carrie Murphy was in one, Diane Abbott's another, using the most violent language imaginable. Now, when a man uses violent language about women repeatedly, again, it goes beyond a political or a factional point, right? What kind of what kind of psychological mindset is at work here? You know, maybe I don't think this is about left and right, and I'm not trying to win people over to my side of the debate here by you know trying to reach. It's not ideological. Anybody that uses that kind of violent, aggressive language about women repeatedly, particularly women of colour, I think they have significant problems. And they certainly shouldn't be working in a progressive party. And, and they certainly shouldn't try and uh, dawn themselves the mask of anti-racism. And it's just, again, it's, you know, repulsive. All right, let's go to, I mean, there's so many examples. Let's just do two more examples of how sort of childish these people are. Because I think we, when we get John in, we're going to discuss sort of like what what explains this sort of behavior? And what does it say actually about the Labour Party that these are the people who ended up having very high powered jobs yeah. in it? Because these are people that, you know, I wouldn't really want you know, running any organization, no. let alone the organization which is supposed to be the future of social democracy not the, well, and the, the future and present, the main representatives of progressive politics in this country to be run by people like this. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I want to just bring up one more to so, sort of show how this isn't just, um, Factional, it's just like who the who are these people? So this is Emily Oldno again, Graphic 7A, who is, let's remind you, executive director of the Labour Party for Governance. So she's the person who's she's the top dog when it comes to dealing with complaints. She's the, you know, the buck stops with her. Um, let's get up this conversation about Carrie Murphy and um Katie Clark. Emily Oldno, fuck off pubehead. I'm too busy slagging you off. Mike Creighton, can I just point out from my sick bed, there's too much disparaging talk about old folk on this timeline. Salt of the earth, don't you know? Tracy Allen, who is pubehead? Um, Emily Oldno, to talk to you about John Trickett's diary, Katie. Also, oh, they were talking, they were calling Katie Clark pubehead. Um, now let's go to graphic 7B. Again, they're talking about Katie Clark. Emily Oldno, Katie Clark had the exact same clothes on yesterday. Smelly cow. Tracy Allen, didn't she do that at conference too? Emily Oldno, yes, same clothes, four days. Patrick Kennigan, probably slept in them. Disgusting. Emily Oldno, Carrie is fat too. There's a good old role in that photo. Like this is, I've heard people say, look, this is a WhatsApp chat and people chat shit mm. on, on WhatsApp chats. And it's, you know, potentially, you know, sometimes I say some things on, on WhatsApp chats that are a bit politically incorrect or something. And, you know, I wouldn't publish it publicly on Twitter. But what the fuck adult? writes this shit because it's not even you know it's not it's not funny like if sometimes if you've got a sort of if you're doing some banter on a on a what on a whatsapp chat and someone says something rude about someone you're like oh well, at least that that was witty oh, i wouldn't say that in public but this is just like these are, are these people 14 no they're executive directors of britain's main progressive party i mean a normal and i know what you're saying and there's a, there is this isn't us trying to oh this is cancel culture this is not cancel culture this is not about there's a distinction between what you would publish uh publish uh, publicly or privately which like you say michael is, is a thing you know on whatsapp i'll be saying oh you fancy this or that person you know 
that's what people do. But you would say the same to me. You'd say something silly. This is. I think that's making the WhatsApp chat sound a bit more innocent. Like, you fancy this person? You people no, are. Like... You might be rude about other people, but just not no, in the talk, well, we're not childish. No, well, we're we not. don't say anything like this. I mean, I might go. God, that guy's fucking ridiculous. I mean, okay, that's everybody does that. But like you say, it's like. Pube-head. I don't call people fat and ugly pubehead. It's like what I mean. Maybe I would have done when I was fourteen, but then I'd have been like, uh, even then, country, even then, it? people would have been like, fourteen-year-old Michael, that's really mean. That's mm. really mean. Yeah, Pube- exactly. Pubehead. I mean, like, and this was a person be- who was. This was a person in charge of how people should behave in the Labour Party. Yeah, who hasn't moved on from being like a really awful fourteen-year-old with an OBE. How Bizarre. does that happen?